Hey there everybody. I am so happy to be here today painting for you and I have in my mind I want to do kind of a linear horizontal uh, dirty pour I guess you would call it maybe and I'm using all deco art products and I have their new pouring medium which they shipped to me to experiment with. I don't think it's available yet in the stores. I'm in the artist program with them and so I was able to get it kind of firsthand to play with it. Everything I'm using is deco art and um, this first one I'm going to go ahead and mention and get it out of the way. It was one I mixed the other day, kind of a bronzy color. I cannot find the bottle so I probably threw it away when I finished the bottle. But it was already mixed up and it was covered up and it's been sitting there and I want to use it. It's got pouring medium in it. And the pouring medium ratio is one to one. So one part paint to one part pouring medium. And this right here is a mixture of peacock pearl and teal. And they're both dazzling metallics. I'm going to give them one last tap to get every little bit of paint out of these bottles. This color is so beautiful. Both of the colors are beautiful. So that's the mixture of the peacock and the teal. This is silver. Dazzling metallic shimmering silver. And I'm not going to add any more to that because I don't want to overflow my cup. And I'm going to go ahead and add the pouring medium to the two metallics. And then with the other colors, I'll speed through that because it, you know, is kind of boring to watch somebody mix paint. But I wanted to go ahead and do the metallics just to see if I need to add water because with regular colors in the deco art line you do not have to add water when you add your medium to it one part to one part so I want to see because usually the metallics are thicker and so I either need more pouring medium or water so I'm going to add more pouring medium I would say their pouring medium is a little more fluid than, say, Floetrol, which a lot of people use, and I have used a lot in the past. So, it is a little bit more fluid and watery, which is a good thing, because then it doesn't require you to add water, which is just going to kind of mute down your paint color, you know, the vividness of it. The water is going to lessen the intensity of it. Okay, so when I added more pouring medium, that helped with the consistency. So let's see how the silver does here. Always go around the sides of your cup when you're mixing in any kind of medium to make sure that everything is thoroughly mixed from the outside in. You don't want to miss the edges. That's also a little bit thick, so I'm pretty much filling this paint up to the brim of the cup. And these are like three ounce cups. So I have to be careful because otherwise I'm going to spill out over the edges here. Kind of once you get that medium or whatever mixed in, you can usually stir a little faster, but until you get it kind of mixed into that paint, it's going to be very wet along the edges. Right there I just went over the edge onto my finger. So that helped with that consistency as well. And like I said, I'm really up to the brim on that one with the paint. That's why I always keep wet paper towels. So the next one I'm going to show you is 
buttermilk, which is a little more yellow than Titan Buff. And Titan Buff is a premium deco art paint that is in a, a tube, so it's a, a higher quality paint. It's more artist grade. So here is the buttermilk, and as you can see, this one is more of a tan color. This one I just picked out. I had an extra bottle of gloss enamel white. So this has some gloss sheen to it. If I pour any white besides this into my pour, it will just be the regular titanium white that I mix one to one as well. This color is a combination of zinc and dark chocolate. So I wanted kind of a brownish gray. So that's that color. This color is baby blue. Move these out of the way as I go. Also need to keep them aside because I always list the colors at the bottom of all my videos. I always list my colors that I use so that if you want to try the same color scheme, you'll have those references. This color is dark chocolate mixed with slate gray. So it was darker, the chocolate color was darker, and I it softened it just a bit with that gray. And then this color is the Titan Buff, or the buttermilk, one or two, one or the other of those, and the dark chocolate. So it's kind of a brownish tan color. So I think I got all the the colors I used. And so now I'm going to add my pouring medium to my regular colors that aren't metallic and I'm going to do a one-to-one -one ratio. The Titan Buff is a premium paint so I have a feeling it'll take more than one-to-one. -one. I'll probably have to use a little bit more pouring medium and I'll just do it like I do with water. I'll add it until I get it to the right consistency. sit on that jar. So all these are pretty much going to be full cups almost. Well they are going to be full cups because I'm, I'm making as much paint as I possibly can because I don't want to run out of anything. This pouring medium is 16 ounces. That's the way it comes. So it doesn't go very far if you do quite a bit of painting like I did. I'm going to speed up through the mixing process. Okay, so they're mixed, and to be quite honest, the pouring medium one-to-one -one with the regular colors to me is almost a little bit on the watery side, but I'm going to leave it because my metallics are a little bit on the thicker side. And I've got this Titan Buff, and I don't know if you can see this, but it's got this uh, lumpy, cottage cheesy kind of Feel. So I've got to get something to mix this with that I can break up those lumps. This paint was the premium paint, which I've had for quite a while, maybe um, four to five months or so, and I don't know if it just sat too long, but like I said, it's very lumpy, and you don't want, you want a very creamy, silky, kind of texture of your paint. When you pour it, you don't want to have any lumps. It's going to make your painting look less than what you want it to be. So basically, I'm just taking a spoon and I'm, you know, pressing that paint against the side of the cup to try to break up those lumps. 
And if I can't get it smooth enough, I'll have to scratch this cup and mix another color. So that's what I'm doing right now is just trying to get the lumps out. Now I need to add some more pouring medium because it's thickened up. This was the premium paint in the tube, which I knew I would it would take more pouring medium anyway. Because the better quality of paint, like this is artist grade, so the better quality that's more artist grade is going to always be thicker. It's always going to be thicker. Uh, that's true with any tube paint. You're going to have to add, besides your medium, you're going to have to add some water generally. But the pouring medium is fluid enough to where you don't have to add water, but I'm just having to add more pouring medium. Always scrape around the sides and get all the sides because if your paint is in one area and your pouring medium is in another, you just want to make sure it's all blended really well. So I got that to smooth down, but I really had, if you have that sometimes with lumpy paint, you can try to take like a spoon or something that has a, fl a flatter surface besides your craft stick and really work it in and kind of scrub it against your cup as you're stirring and that will break down those lumps <clears throat> and make it more fluid and creamy again. So this canvas that I'm going to be working on is a 24 by 12 inch canvas and I wanted it to be um, kind of a landscape kind of feel. I'm not saying it has to be a landscape, just kind of oriented in that, you know, kind of fashion. So I have my 24 inch by 12 inch and I've got the push pins in the corner. But before I do that, I want to do, I think, about five dirty pour cups. And I'm going to kind of pour them horizontally. And so I want some variation in the, the different pours. And at the very top is going to be the lightest, and I want it to kind of feel more like sky. So I'm going to use, I'll just do the first one as more of the sky feel. So I'm going to do the blue. I'm not going to say the colors, I'm just going to let you watch and that way I can uh, speed up the process a little bit so it doesn't take so long for you to watch. So this is a lot of paint that I have mixed up, and I probably have way too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour, and it's probably going to go off the edges. I'm not going to try to put it in the pan because I'm, it's really more about what I see on the canvas, and I don't want to mess it up by trying to keep it off the table. So this one is probably just going to be a messy one, and I might have way too much paint. I did not put any silicone in this. I really did not want cells per se. So this was supposed to be my sky one and that's like way darker already than I expected. So this won't be a sky landscape painting is just going to be an experiment to see how to lay these colors out. Like I 
said I did not put silicone in, but I'm getting little cells anyway. So first of all, I'm going to go from one end to the other just to try to get coverage on the ends. And I'm, what I usually do is I'll roll my fingers over the edge of the canvas to kind of help paint. I had seen another artist on Facebook do this kind of and she made it look so easy. But isn't it funny how some people have processes that are easy for them and for others it's not so easy. I'm needing this paint down here to, to move a little more, so I'm going to make sure I add all my paint that I've got. Drag my finger through there. I don't like that big clump of dark there. And when I went through, it kind of left a circle there, which I don't want, so I'm trying to get rid of that. So now I'm coming back down to try to get my paint to move. I got my new heat gun today. The one that I ordered that was to replace the one that of mine that died and it has smelled up the whole area that I work in because it has a really rubbery kind of smell. It's kind of odd. That's all I can smell right now is that rubber. Crazy about that. But I don't really So what I'm doing is adding a little paint back from what was on the table. breaks that gray up a little bit. And then I throw my cup in the paint. So where my paint kind of dribbled, it left that pattern, which I don't want it there. So I'm just going through with my finger. I'm going to take some of this brown that's barely in there and try to... So it's totally not what I expected. And like I always say, if there's an area you don't like, then just do something to change it. I have a clump of paint right here. So I fished it out. So it's interesting I have cells and I really didn't want cells but that's okay. That's strictly deco art paint with deco art 
pouring medium. And I only have one little streak of white. That's very interesting. So I'm going to actually see if I can extend it. I probably can't. I'm trying to roll that brown off just a little bit. So this end is covered, but the other one is not as much. So I'm going to take it this way a little bit, just to get it to come down over the edges. Now I can take it back a little bit. So I'm going to take some white. I guess I'll put my heat gun into it and see what changes because as it dries it's going to do that anyway. So you might as well kind of see what you're going to end up with, right? It's so pretty just even on my fingers. So I'm going to have to put paint on my new heat gun. It's all black and red and all pretty and untouched and now I'm going to put my nasty hands on it. Drag a little bit through that brown to see it, it brings that color out. So I think, I think I have all the clumps. It doesn't look like too many more cells were going to form, but you never know. So here it is. I'm tilting it some more, just for the heck of it. I'm trying to decide if I want more of the upper part to show or more of the lower part. I think I like it with the brown more towards the bottom. Taking it away to dry.